we want to convert our activity model into a class model, basically a visual diagram of the data structures in our business process. Now, in order to do that, the class model, especially with the multiplicities in it, is going to be an expression of some of the business rules associated with that business process. So it's important before we jump into the class diagram to think about some of our business rules. One of the things that business rules do is help ensure effective and consistent treatment of activities. We want to have these set up to support organizational objectives. Business rules essentially put constraints on the process. So you think about something simple like management authorization for increase of credit for a customer above and beyond $10,000 or dual signatures on a check above a certain amount. You know, that's a constraint on the process that adds an additional level of authority or an additional step to the process. Business rules basically are ways that we can implement controls and control activities on our process. And we talked a little bit about approvals, verifications, uh, even things like bank reconciliations. So those are all controls that we put in place to help double check or to make sure that things that aren't supposed to happen don't happen. You can also put controls in place uh, to, as review, reviews of performance. And of course, controls uh, help to secure or with the security of assets. And they help us with basic types of uh, controls like separation of duties. So, we need controls in any business process. We're going to have some parameters. In the sales process, one of the controls, one of the critical controls for big uh, enterprise type sales is extending credit to customers. Can that car company sell a car to a customer that likely will not have the ability to pay for that car? Well, that's a decision that has to be made. Do we extend credit? Do we tell that customer no? or tell that, in that case, potential customer, no. So what we want to do in setting up rules is determine, well, what are the objectives of each business event? What is it we're trying to accomplish? And we use the BPMN event or activity diagram to help identify each of these events. For each event, what are the constraints? Define constraints 
for each event. What can people, or in this case customers, and or employees do? What information is available? Or not available? What is the IS going to do? Or I guess more precisely, what should the IS do? So setting up these rules, what can the people do? What is the IS or what is the automation technology going to do? You know, what information is available? Key components of setting up these rules. And once you have uh, evaluated the business process, then you can start to define these business rules. So we could start with some of the steps in the sunset example. And we could start with the Process, we'll do the sunset rules. For sales. So we've got these steps that take place, our activities. What is our intention? basically what's the objective of that step what is the partner is there what authority do they have what action are they going to take do we have to consider any access controls what do they have access to what should they not have access to and then we'll consider from a technology standpoint and software standpoint, what are the application controls? What do we want our sales system to do or not do or, or allow someone to do? So we'll take a look at the provide quote activity. So this is all, these are all our headers. So let's say for provide quote, Well, what would be one of the intentions or, or objectives of providing the quote? Well, we want to provide the quote promptly but accurately. We want a quick quote that we can provide to the customer, but that's going to be accurate and of course, provide us a profit margin. Now, if we need to involve our partner on that, for instance, the supplier for some of the items we may not have, what kind of rules do we want to have in place for that? And then, you know, what do we do for authority and action? So, uh, we could say our partner or supplier must provide a quote within one day and manager must approve anything over greater than five thousand dollars so our supplier we want to provide a quote back to us within one day so that we can give the customer uh, a quote that includes all of our activities as well. And then any quote that goes above $5,000, we need to have manager approval for. Access controls, well, let's say our supplier, and in many cases, will provide access to some of our systems from a supplier standpoint, for instance, our quote database. They'll have access to our quote process so that they can key in their quote right into our system. We don't want the suppliers to just be able to change prices whenever they feel like so. We want the suppliers and 
change established prices. And then from an application standpoint, well, we want our quote system to do the following. We generate a quote number. Default values for various items. So we may assume that they're going to have one graphic setup activity in a quote, so it would default to that for a quote and so forth. Uh, you also want to have some uh, other types of controls like uh, range and limit checks. This can help to ensure that a typo isn't made if a quote ends up being for $20 million and uh, we've never had a quote before ever go more than 10000 That might be something that you want the system to kick back out. And you also want that quote system to actually generate some kind of an audit trail that we can follow. And then we'll do the same thing for receiving the order. Well, just like uh, with the quotes, we want to receive the order and record it promptly and accurately. We also want to make sure that we authorize customer credit. Now, our supplier partner must record our order to them within one hour of receiving it. Manager is going to approve orders over 5,000. And we might even say that the credit manager must approve orders greater than, say, 2,500. So here we'll have some controls in place. Again, our suppliers can't change prices. And the uh, partners can't prove customer credit greater than, oh, so let's say 1,000. So now we want to make sure that our system does some of these things and takes the burden off us. So the order system will generate order numbers. Provide default values. Give us range and limit checks for the order. So here's one where the order may be different. The order amounts may be different from the quote amounts. So we want range and limit checks for reasonableness. If they're ordering less than the quote, that probably is okay. If they're ordering five times as much as was quoted, then that might be something that needs to be investigated. We also want to link the order to the quote. 
And of course, we want an audit trail. So it's a good, from a business rule standpoint, to consider all of the things that we want to take place. So we're looking at these business rules that are associated with this process in a little bit more detail so that we can thoroughly document and build a class diagram. As you build this table of business rules, and you'll provide a row of rules and guidelines surrounding those rules for each of the business and activities in that business process. So we would continue this one with additional rules for prepare products and apply graphics, uh, deliver the order, invoice the customer, and receive the payment. And indeed, you can uh, look those up in more detail yourself. But this is a good start and a good way to determine exactly how you want, what rules you want to apply. And, and these rules are a good first step towards implementing the cr controls you need in a business process to help protect your organization and its assets. So these rules end up becoming the framework with which we can now, uh, and, and of course the, ref the rules can be used in conjunction with the activity diagram and as you identify additional rules, possibly exceptions that take place, the activity diagram can then be modified and extended to consider those additional business rules and exceptions that need to be accounted for. Once that process has been completed, then you've got a solid foundation for building your data structure and developing the class model that you'll use to actually build the database that will house the information system processes.